Just 300 miles northeast of Seattle, Washington, lies Canada's Okanagan Valley. In the summertime, this oasis of beauty attracts hundreds of thousands of tourists and boaters to Lake Okanagan. One of the largest, oldest and deepest glacial lakes in Canada. Its treacherous currents and the area's unpredictable winds have also given it a reputation as Canada's most dangerous. But the locals say that what is lurking below the surface of the water is far more lethal. It looked like almost like a whale moving. What I seen was thick black uh, two coils that were going in and out of the water. It's almost like a feeling that you have when you're walking down a dark alley or dark street and you think that there's something watching you. Exactly what I saw was a large hump or a section of animal that uh, came out of the water, had skin black, shiny like a whale. Witnesses report seeing a huge serpentine creature with smooth dark skin and an elongated head measuring up to 50 feet in length and thicker than a telephone pole. The beast is capable of moving at incredible speeds coiling its body in vertical undulations and propelling itself with a powerful tail. This monster was known to Native Americans as Nahatik, or the Lake Demon of Okanagan, and is now known to locals as Okopoko. The creature has been sighted and documented more than any other lake beast in the world. It has prehistoric features, but we know for a fact that no prehistoric creature would live the length of time that this animal is still in existence in this lake. Arlene Gall is a historian and has written three books on the lake demon. Gall alone has catalogued over 300 historical sightings of the monster. We are having five to seven reported sightings per year of Ogopogo. It overpowers the sightings uh, in any other freshwater lakes throughout the world. And now this photo catalogued by Arlene Gall and taken at Lake Okanagan on August 25th of 2008 could be the most conclusive piece of evidence to date. I was floored. I was amazed. It, uh, within seconds of, of viewing this creature, you know instantly that it's something that shouldn't be there. Sean Valoria is an avid photographer who has taken hundreds of photos of Lake Okanagan. On the fateful day, he and his girlfriend Jessica Wiegers noticed an ominous disturbance on the surface of the lake. We were sitting at our favorite spot down there and I got up and I seen something through the trees. What I seen was thick two coils that were going in and out of the water, a snake-like body. She was yelling and pointing at something she had seen out in the lake and I ran over to her stumbling. I had my camera with me and I had the creature perfectly in frame. Sean Valoria's story and these photographs have never been seen on television before. The thing that's interesting about this series of photos is that there is a boat, like I said, in the frame for a reference of size. If this is a 16-foot boat, that's easily 18 to 20 feet long. Um, this picture in particular is very interesting to me. As I move into the enhanced copy, you can see what clearly looks like a back section with uh, ridges on it uh, and then a section of I think his neck underneath the water with its head coming back up out of the water. Monster Quest had the Valoria images independently examined and could not detect any doctoring done on these photos. Images depicting the alleged monster are consistently, eerily similar. Even so, the local scientific community has largely dismissed the evidence to date. 
in my opinion, it's much more likely that these sightings are a result of frail brains and the appearance of things that look very much like an Ogopogo. Chris Bull ran the local fisheries department for 20 years and has cataloged every known aquatic species in the lake. I've seen a number of pictures uh, attributed to the Ogopogo that uh, look to me like waves and I've seen others. I saw a picture of a beaver that uh, was meant to be an Ogopogo. But even Chris Bull is disturbed by these latest photographs. It's highly unusual. I, I have no idea what it would be. It would be pretty unusual to find an animal that looked like that. Um, but on the other hand, it isn't something I could identify. Monster Quest will search the lake to try to uncover further evidence of this beast. The team will use high sensitivity thermal imaging to scan this massive lake by helicopter. They will have a 250 horsepower Zodiac chase boat positioned to race to the scene of any sightings and then attempt to capture further images of the creature on tape. Quite a breathing system if we have to. Divers will be dropped into the lake to examine various underwater caves for evidence that the beast lives there. And hydroacoustic bathing will be used to lure the monster to their position. It's just a matter of time um, until we actually find this aquatic animal. Bill Stasiuk has researched the lake demon for 31 years and maintains a website devoted to the beast. He and his research partner, Len Melnick, will lead the expedition. They will focus on the area of the lake where Sean Valoria's photos were taken. It's a section with a long history of encounters with a lake demon. This is Rattlesnake Island. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is Squally Point right here. This is the traditional home of Ogopogo. And there is a number of caves on the west side right here of Rattlesnake Island. In some of those caves, nobody's ever been in before. The caves are described by Native American legends as the home of the lake demon. Even the skeptics agree there is something unusual about this part of the lake. It's not uh, surprising that a lot of the reports might come from Squally Point because when you look at the profile of the lake, it's very deep by and large, but there's areas where the bottom comes right up to within 70 meters of the surface. The unusual vertical ridges at the bottom of the lake forces the deep water towards the shore and brings deep water fish and other marine life that usually would never be seen to the area. So if there was an animal that needed a lot of feed, it would probably live in one of these upwelling areas. The Monster Quest team is making its final preparations in their search for this legendary creature. We would very much like in this present expedition to obtain a tissue sample somehow or other which could be um, verified by DNA methodology just exactly where this animal fits in the animal kingdom. After a final evening of rest, it's the crack of dawn and the expedition gets underway. The Zodiac boat crew are the first to brave the elements as they hit the water. They will rendezvous with the helicopter thermal imaging team once they've located a search area. We've got some new technology here, uh, state of the art. It can measure uh, temperature differences to one-tenth of a degree Celsius, but if there's anything on top of the water, we can definitely see it. Here we go. With particular focus on the areas of the most concentrated sightings of the creature, the helicopter will scan over 30 miles of the lake. Uh, 
And with relatively calm waters, the conditions are ideal. Well, I'd say our, uh, the system's working well. The Zodiac team, equipped with infrared binoculars, is first to arrive at the Rattlesnake Island search area. Right here. Look. They're also first to notice something unusual break the surface of the water. Look out there, I'll back the boat up, the, the, the birds are feeding on and there's something in the water. This frenzy of bird activity at the surface of the water is a sign that something is feeding below. Whatever it is, it's too deep to see with the naked eye. Zodiac to helicopter, Zodiac to helicopter. The helicopter is not yet in position and does not receive the radio call. This opportunity might be lost. There could be something just below the surface that only the advanced thermal imaging technology could detect. There's nobody on the radio yet. The Zodiac the helicopter. The high sensitivity imaging technology aboard the helicopter can detect even the smallest temperature changes. Whether this creature is warm-blooded or cold-blooded, any recent activity on the surface of the lake would leave an identifiable trail. Zodiac to helicopter, Zodiac to helicopter, do you read me? Yeah, that's a little bit better. Go ahead. It's something just north of the island. Roger, roger. The helicopter finally appears over the mountains and immediately begins scanning the area. Check this area and that, uh, we're hoping that maybe Ogopolo is in the area also uh, feeding on something uh, like the birds. The thermal imaging equipment is not finding anything. I don't see any indication of anything from up there, do you? Right here, right here. Following the directional instructions from the Zodiac, they quickly expand their search. We'll continue on uh, down towards the Bali Point. Uh, continue uh, just widen our search pattern here. There isn't much time left as the sun is rising above the mountains. But as they round the bend at Squally Point, the helicopter crew gets their first hopeful sign. Well, I see a trail in the water, so maybe that one's over Bolo. The camera has picked up a thermal signature, and it's big. Just of uh, Squally Point here, and uh, looks like Ray has got uh, something on this camera here. Uh, you guys can make your way down here and uh, have a look for us. You bet, that's a Roger. We're on our way. Oh, Hang on, here we go. The team has a small window of time and speeds to the sighting. I just uh, heads off to my left right now, just around the corner. Can you repeat that for us? Uh, we're a little bit uh, rough down here. Yeah, you're actually in that general. You're pretty close uh, right there. Have a look around and yeah. we're in the area he said it's, it's gonna be really difficult to uh, see anything in this the weather conditions have changed and the team is frantically trying to join up we're over top of the area where they picked it up Bill get your butt here did you see that houseboat the Zodiac team calls in the dive boat and the dive team hurries to get in the water. This is the area we want to be in, gentlemen. Right. Right there. Yeah, right, right. Right there. Yep. 
Monster Quest is searching the depths of North America's Lake Okanagan in search of a legendary lake demon that has been described by local residents of this valley for over 300 years. Sightings predate even the earliest Western settlers, and Native American legends clearly describe an awesome creature called Nahatik. The word Nahatik is a sacred creature of the water. The body is like a snake, and the head is usually about as, they said, as big as a cow, and it had huge eyes. It was a creature that was meant to be feared. Ancestors always said, when you disturb something that's never been disturbed, things can change. When settlers arrived to this territory in the late 1800s, they too began to tell stories of an ominous creature living in the lake. They had, at that time, been communicating with the, the natives who were telling them stories about disappearances, problems out on the lake, about this huge mass of animal surfacing. These pioneers translated the name for Nahaitik, and the monster became known to all as the Lake Demon. As more and more sightings were reported, the pioneers began to patrol the lake shore at night as a defense against the monster. They felt that this was a necessity um, to protect their families completely from an Ogopogo attack. The creature that prowls the depths of this enormous body of water has remained a mystery for centuries. But the descriptions are all consistent with what this scientist calls a mega serpent. This animal lives in relatively deep water, at least a hundred feet in depth and often down to a thousand feet. Dr. Ed Bowsfield is a former senior scientist at Canada's National Museum of Natural Sciences and has spent the last 15 years researching lake and sea monsters. Dr. Bowsfield traces the evidence of this creature back to a specimen discovered by Captain Bill Hagland in 1937. Found in the stomach of a sperm whale off the Pacific coast, the specimen is thought to be one of the few that has ever been seen by man. The other specimen was an infant of the species, sketched by Captain Hagland several years later. It's our theory, uh, before mankind came and dammed up the Columbia system, that uh, big aquatic mega serpents had as easy access to the lake by simply swimming up the Columbia River the same way the salmon do, and the sturgeons and other uh, animals that uh, go back and forth from the sea to the uh, freshwater lakes. The Lake Okanagan animal is almost certainly a landlocked version of this marine form. Ed says that one of the reasons for the prolific sightings of the lake demon may be its feeding habits. It could come up to the surface mainly to prey on salmonoid fishes. There are 22 known species of fish in the lake, including salmon, trout, burbot, and chub. The notion of a large carnivore living in the depths of Lake Okanagan seems to be bolstered by recent photographs, films and videos, as well as first-hand encounters that all describe a creature that seems to feed at the surface of the water. Time of season when the rainbow trout and the kokanee were probably in the top 15 or 20 feet of the water and we were just sitting there, it's dead calm, it was glass, like there was no ripples against the boat or anything. McCall Mann is an avid boatsman who logs hundreds of hours each year on Lake Okanagan and is very familiar with its strange wave patterns. He's always been skeptical of accounts of Okapogo, but his son Andrew had a terrifying open water encounter with the monster. And it was dead calm and it got hot and we decided let's reel up the fishing lines and just park the boat 
and Andrew jumps in the water, he's sort of swimming around in the water. There was no wind and there was no boats and there was this weird wave that happened. And all of a sudden behind it, there was a form that came out of the water. As soon as he saw it, he launched out of the water like he was a dolphin and landed on the bow of the boat. He never can get out of the water without somebody pulling his hands up. And it might have been feeding along the surface. That's kind of what it looked like it was doing. I'm pretty sure what, what we all saw on that boat that day was whatever people think they see when they see Ogopogo, because it was spooky. The Monster Quest expedition team spotted a suspicious flurry of bird activity and called in the thermal imaging team. When the chopper arrived, they noticed a large thermal trail at the surface of the water that could be consistent with the creature rising from the depths to feed. The dive team had been mobilized and has moved into position at the location where these thermal trails were discovered. While the search continues, Ray Snitinsky is now analyzing the evidence he captured earlier that day sharpening the data through computer manipulation. We're going to try to tighten up the temperature range. We see the average water temperature is about 46.7 degrees Fahrenheit. If we put a spot on this blue ribbon, which is very unusual because it is perpendicular to the way that the waves are forming, we see that it's running at about 45.6 degrees. So we see that it's at least one degree different. The science team suspects that these thermal trails could be the result of a large, cold-blooded creature rising to the surface of the lake. These blue ribbons would suggest that there is something in the water that has stirred the water up, that has brought up some of the cold water from below. You can see that they are uh, quite long and, and relative to the boat, we're looking at the boat that's probably 15 feet long. We're looking at a band here that's probably 50 feet long. The oldest piece of footage of the creature was taken by Art Folden in 1968. It shows this large mass of wake with protrusions, dark protrusions coming out of the water. Relative to the pine trees on shore, which were approximately 25 feet tall, the dark mass was estimated to be 60 feet long and about 3 feet in diameter. Arlene's archive also includes the film footage recorded in 1980 by Larry Tall. We did frame by frame film analysis and you can actually see in some of the frames you can see portions of the animal but in some of the frames where the head pops up and in the next frame the mouth actually opens. This all means that the dive team may be in for much more than anticipated. Expedition leader Bill Stasiak has asked them to accelerate their preparations to respond to the urgent call, alerting them to the possible presence of the monster. Sometimes when you're looking into the distance, you're not too sure what you're seeing. Craig Smiley is the lead diver on the expedition and has over 20 years of dive experience. Shapes moving. Shapes moving dark. Sometimes your mind plays a few games on you, depending on how deep you are. Your eyes play tricks for sure, yeah. The team has been forced to hurriedly get into the water, which is always a safety risk. The divers are aware that even the act of breathing can have a fatal outcome. Your exhaust bubbles build up on the surface of the caves. I don't know whether it's going to collapse or whether there's gas trapped under there or whether it has been some kind of an animal that's, uh, you know, burrowed itself down into the mud. Team leader Bill Stasiak is looking to increase the divers' chances of a close encounter with a lake demon. They will be using hydroacoustic baiting to lure the creature to this area. About a year ago, 
I did some uh, recording in the lake in the middle of winter and uh, came up with some really interesting sounds. Uh, I was able to get a frequency on them and they ran around 30 cycles per second. Bill will be reproducing the low frequency tones he recorded and broadcasting them back into the lake. The tones come from animals that are bigger than anything that is known to live in this lake. This animal probably has some kind of um, sound production or reception. Large marine mammals, especially uh, cetaceans, whales, uh, emit um, very loud sounds in, in low frequency range, uh, which can travel over immense distances in seawater. Bill Stasiak is hoping these sounds will attract the creature to the position of his divers, who will be descending to the bottom of the lake with the aid of hose gear. At this point in time, now it's climbing up, going from the 20 to 60 cycles per second. When Bill increases the intensity of the signals and his lead diver reaches the sediment bottom, something begins to stir. I see something move back there. You got anything up on the surface? No. Something just stirred the bottom up here so much I can't see what's going on. Diver just had something behind him. Okay, you stir you stir finding those weird uh I have no, uh, no visibility whatsoever. What do you think you got there? Yeah, yeah, I'm not getting me anymore. The team has lost contact with Craig Smiley, its diver. Hey, Bill, do you got anything on that sonar? Are you okay? Lake Okanagan, British Columbia. In the small peaceful valley, stories of a terrifying lake demon have been passed down from generation to generation. Now, Monster Quest launches an expedition in search of the creature that locals call Ogopogo. But there's been a problem. After trying to lure the creature to their position using hydroacoustic bathing technology, dive master Len Melnick has lost contact with his lead diver. The last communication from him was that something stirred up the sediment bottom, obscuring his vision completely, raising the possibility that an encounter with the creature may have occurred. Okay, standby divers standing by. Okay, you're running out of umbilical. The anxiety is building as the minutes tick by. The team decides they cannot wait any longer. Second diver on his way down. See tanks. Len sends in another team member to recover the lost diver. Standby diver. Do you see him or are you you're almost there? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I just coming to the end of the uh the sediment that's gonna stay up here. It's Roger. 
The support divers are unable to assist because the lead diver is down too far. You don't see any uh, shadows or anything of anything, eh? You don't? You don't got them? No. Then, finally, communication is re-established. Are you okay? Yeah. Divers are okay? Yeah, I don't know what it was, but, uh... Oh. Yeah, well, you don't get scared. <laughs> I didn't used to. <laughs> I don't know what that was. The team isn't taking any chances and they make the decision to cut this dive short and bring the shaken diver up as quickly as they can. Grab that wrench before he knocks it. I don't know what what that was, but it was big enough to have created enough salt stirred up that I, I couldn't see anything beyond that point. But uh, it really, really made me wonder, I tell you, when I first, when I first saw it, yeah. There are these sinkholes in the ground, kind of like big oval shape, but they were big. I mean, the first one, when I came up to it, I actually fell down, I went down into it. And it these sinkholes are unusually big and could be evidence of a large creature burrowing in the deep sediment layer at the bottom of this glacial lake. They were filled with silt, but you could see like something was... Something was maybe had been sitting in sitting there. Sitting in there, or, or, yeah, because they, they, they weren't... Simple, like they weren't the same as the uh, surrounding terrain. These holes uh, would be consistent with an animal that would have buried itself into the mud either for uh, to ambush a prey or maybe just to keep out of harm's way and keep himself camouflaged. Though the lake demon of Okanagan is the most sighted and photographed lake monster in the world, face-to-face -face encounters are rare, and only one is believed to have been captured on video by this longtime lake resident. I noticed that there was something very unusual going on uh, to to the uh, to the north of me here. Paul Demara grew up on Lake Okanagan and returns there frequently. We were all sitting here uh, at the lake property. There was some number of my friends and myself. And my mom said, hey, you better get your video camera and, and check it out. So it was a really unusual sight. Um, videotaped it for as long as it was there. And actually, while I was videotaping it, this boat came along with a water skier behind him. And it almost looked as though they saw something in the water and they, they, they turned extremely quickly to avoid what was in the water. And the water skier basically was unable to keep up with the boat because they turned like 90 degrees. And so he ended up in the water and my comment at the time was, wow, that guy's gonna get eaten alive. It's just like, there's something unusual going on there. It was a bit of a, you know, a wow factor in, in seeing what was going on. Though Damara and the Monster Quest team have made repeated efforts to uncover the identity of the water skier, he has never been identified. Despite the fact that in this instance and others, many witnesses are longtime lakeshore residents and are familiar with the lake's behavior, still some skeptics insist that sightings claiming to be of the monster are in fact peculiar wave patterns. My feeling is uh, uh, the physics uh, associated with the pictures, they don't add up. Professor Sander Kalisau, a leading expert in wind and wave dynamics at the University of British Columbia, believes he can account for this. I think with the uh, proper uh, study of those uh, pictures from physics point of view, it is highly unlikely that they link to a, a creature. Professor Kalasal believes that the answer lies in the physics of the internal wave structures that develop between layers of the lake waters that have different temperatures and densities. The moment we have the internal wave structures, something will be also happening at the upper layer. Uh, not as large as the ones that we have here, but you will be able to see a, a disturbance here as well. He explains how seemingly singular waves can form at the surface of the water, and that there is something these witnesses see moving beneath the water, 
That just isn't the monster. Essentially, the energy will be transferred to the upper layer, and then we might see rather interesting wave structures at the upper layer near the shore. While skeptics dismiss eyewitness reports as mere sightings of strange wave patterns found in large lakes, those who have encountered the creature firsthand say otherwise. One thing everyone agrees on is that the ultimate evidence would be a physical specimen or at the very least a DNA sample that would confirm the existence of this unknown species. But getting a DNA sample from a 50-foot creature that swims at terrifying speeds is a daunting task. Remote Lake Okanagan in British Columbia is the target of this Monster Quest expedition. It is one of Canada's oldest glacial lakes and home to a lake demon known to locals as Ogopogo. The dive team is back in the water. But at this time of the year, daylight disappears early in Lake Okanagan so they won't have much time to return with hard evidence. I asked them in the vicinity of a potential reproductive site for females to recover anything that looked organic uh, in the way of uh, perhaps a small animal, that, a newborn animal that didn't make it and died in the brood chamber. The dive team is focused its search around the caves at Squally Point and Rattlesnake Island. Believed to be the most likely location to find either Ogopogo's lair or breeding grounds. I think it's actually family groups. I don't think it's just one creature. Darrell Ellis is a marathon swimmer. On one of his long training swims down Lake Okanagan, he suddenly found himself being followed by a dark shadow in the water. When he turned around to look, there were two of them. His first reaction was panic. This thing could have wrapped itself around me like a snake. It strikes fear in the hearts of people. The Monster Quest dive team is ready for this next phase in the expedition and makes their way to the underwater precipice. Beneath the steep falloff, the dive team will be looking for caves that could be the breeding grounds of this unknown predator. So far, no sign of the creature. But they are now descending into near darkness and possibly cornering this creature in its lair. I would uh, be uh, uh, quite careful about how I approached a large animal in a cave, indeed. The diver's time in the water is growing short. The caves they are finding in this area have already collapsed, and whatever evidence may lie within is no longer accessible. 
They decide to round the bend at Squally Point in a last-ditch effort to find tangible evidence. Here they'll be exposed to unpredictable currents as well as to the open water where anything could be lurking. They stick close to the ledge and make a startling discovery. The divers uncover the decomposed carcass of an unknown animal. But the topside crew is growing concerned, realizing that they have just a few minutes left on their dive clock. The divers are determined to bring their discovery to the surface and extend their dive. Not seen anything like that. How about you, sir? Certainly doesn't look like. It doesn't really look like a fish. You know, it almost looks like a snake. Well, you should have seen it underwater. Yeah. Like when they first came up to that first one on the camera, it was very snake-like. Oh. Yeah. And uh, the head and everything was perfect. Yeah. The expedition team is unable to identify the specimen. But it does bear some resemblance to the photos and drawings made by Captain Bill Hagland in the 1930s. Monster Quest is searching the depths of the remote Canadian lake, Okanagan, in the hopes of finding a lake demon that locals call Ogopogo. This thermal imaging expert captured what may be the thermal trail left by a large, cold-blooded monster surfacing from the depths. This marathon swimmer says he was chased across the lake by a pair of these unidentified creatures. The video footage captured by this man may be more evidence of multiple creatures living in the lake. And this avid photographer's pictures have confounded even the most hardened skeptics. The expedition team has braved the harsh conditions on the lake, faced the unpredictable lake sediment on its floor, and made a startling discovery. Finding an Okopogo specimen would be a major breakthrough. The team has little time to assess their discovery. They now have just 24 hours to get the specimen off to the lab for analysis. The specimen is frozen and packed in dry ice for shipment. But the divers managed to bring up a carcass of sorts that and they themselves stated that they had never seen a creature similar to this. It would be interesting to see if we can get some DNA samples from this uh, carcass itself. The Monster Quest team has provided a photo of the specimen to Chris Bull at the fisheries department. Chris knows every species in the lake. Apparently it was about uh a foot and a half long by by the report. Um, it doesn't look entirely like anything I've seen in the lake um, and I've seen thousands of fish from the lake. However, it would be nice to see the specimen itself so one could spread it out and uh, perhaps identify it. This is exactly what is happening at the Biodiversity Institute in Guelph, Ontario. They have a DNA barcoding method which uh, would uh, instantly tell us exactly where this animal fits into the animal kingdom. Part of our mandate here is to promote species discovery. Christy Carr is a DNA expert at the Institute, which has cataloged the DNA of over 55,000 species. 
morphologically, it's actually quite, quite unlike anything we've ever seen before. The specimen will be data-based with its collection data and GPS coordinates and photographed from multiple angles. As we can see, there's a very long body region here and this appears to be the mouth region. We can see teeth. So given that gross morphology isn't giving us very many clues here, a very simple way to identify it down to a potential species level is to use its DNA. They have taken a bone sample from which they are extracting a DNA sequence. It will be cross-referenced against 55,000 known species. This is the DNA barcode result. Here represented as a string of approximately 650 nucleotide base pairs. So using our identification engine, it'll query the sequence against our approximately half a million barcode records in our database. When the results come in, the species proves to be identifiable. It is a relatively common species of salmon that had deteriorated to the point that it was difficult to identify from its appearance alone. So sometimes when we're in the field sampling, um, specimens are very decomposed and degraded and it's hard to tell what they are in the field and it's necessary to bring them back to the lab. Ed Bousfield also received the photographic evidence. He came to a similar conclusion. It would have been remarkable if a baby animal had been found out in the lake like that. It turned out to be not a baby specimen. It was disappointing, of course, because uh, there are no specimens anywhere in the, uh, in the museums of the world. And while the search for incontrovertible proof is still ongoing, Sean Valoria's photographs suggest there is something large and unidentified in this lake. It's definitely, you know, been a big factor in, you know, changing our lives over the last little bit and just the simple fact that it kind of opens your eyes to something more out there. The Monster Quest expedition has uncovered some interesting information. The thermal trails that were recorded by Ray Snitinsky seem to suggest that a large cold-blooded creature is surfacing to feed from the depths of the lake. The discovery of sinkholes in the bottom of the lake also point to the idea that much remains unknown about Okanagan and the late demon that may live deep below its surface. I think that we're coming to an exponentially increasing rate of interest in solving the mystery.